Hello, hello guys. I hope everybody's doing super good. I wanted to really quickly just jump on here and show you a little bit about a uh, swale. So if you don't know what a swale is, now is a good opportunity for you to learn. Um, this is going to be really, really cool. So stay tuned. Um, I'm kind of sitting in bed here, so I'm, I'm going to do my best to, to draw this as I, as I can. Um, I pulled together this drawing to give you a demonstration. So so right off the bat, something that I want you to to wrap your head around is the slope. Okay, so swales are done on slopes. And the only time that we build a swale is when we are seeking to capture water or slow down runoff on that slope. Uh, a flat land or, or, or a flatter field, anything of that nature that doesn't have a good contour is not necessary to have a, a swale. And truthfully, you'd probably be wasting your money. Um, what we do on swales though is really awesome. Uh, we'll have a series of, of designs to incorporate a drainage system in a swale where we'll follow these contour lines on the side of a, of a map along the edges of a map as we'll, we'll route the best locations for the swales throughout the property design. Um, and then each swale will have an outlet point where there will be a, uh, virtually a, a seamless and uniform drip line um, irrigation from the edges of the swales where it overflows and fills and starts to, to pour over. So without getting into those technicalities, we'll focus on just understanding the basics of a swale. So so right here on this line, I have right here a, a, um, a contour. If you can see my little dot there, I have a contour that comes down and this line would carry on continually. I've already drilled, uh, drawn up the swale itself so so typically we have we have a, a row that runs like this right and let's say that that was our slope what we would do is we would have our little tractor and his bucket truck and you know whatever he's gonna look like here come out <laughs> that's the greatest drawing of tractor ever uh and he what he's gonna do is he's gonna cut in to the mountain right there and then on this section of the hill, this all comes out and gets lopped over to form a bit of a berm, if you will, right there. And then thus you have our actual pre-drawn swell um, right here. So the purpose of this is to capture and slow water. This contour right here is is... And as close to flat as possible. And the slope is actually so minor that it's actually only one foot of drop for every hundred feet of travel. And it does direct, it is directional. So from, so let's say you had a, a, a 200 foot swale, you'd be dropping two feet by the time you reach to the opposite end. So the water travel is just really, really slow. And by the time that it reaches the end, it has already gone past the drainage points, and so it'll start to refill up. And as it hits those points where it berms over, it will drain out into the next succession of swales and go the opposite direction. The purpose of this, down the side of a hill... Um, wow, that was awesome. Anyway, good, great way to end up the evening. Uh, take care, folks. We'll see you next time. That was my own education. <laughs> I forgot that class was still running. Okay. <laughs> okay, so at the end of of this this succession of swells, you'll have usually a pond or something else that's capturing the water again. So you have this succession of capturing water. Our intentions with a swell here, though, is really to develop a means for it to continue to permeate through the groundwater. So what happens is when this fills with water, now we have this this uh, this succession of of permeation taking place so imagine we had another swell a little bit further down this way down the road or down the hill um for doing the same thing we're really permeating that that water through the soil surfaces and through the subsurface and into those deeper root layers um, and capturing it now if you look at a standard hillside or mountainside what you're going to realize is there's there's not very much vegetation uh, but in those certain particular regions of the world where those mountains have a really good uh, influx of, of different variations of, of topical geography, and they, they actually capture a lot of that water or there's a lot of rock. That rock allows that water to stop or slow and start to permeate through. 
Now, what's cool about a swale is because it's on contour, most of this water will actually bevel out and berm its way or, or fill its way down the bottom of the mountain here, and it'll sort of plume along this, this uh, lower edge. Because of capillary action, you will get a little bit up top, not too much, but there is some that does move upward as well. So with this water penetration, we really are doing a, a justice for the, for the soil life underneath. And immediately upon building our swale, we want to we wanna incorporate some kind of grasses or some kind of root system immediately to start to uh, generate some form of, of um, ecosystem dynamics to that swale. And so you'll see because of the water here, automatically over time, if you just left it be, because of the sheer capture effect of water, nature would begin to take a grip and you'd start to receive some of this greenier on the lower edges. Um, but we're going to do it on purpose. So what we want to do when we design swells is we want to plant those trees ourselves. Now, when we plant these trees, um, our main intention and purpose here is to develop this root system and cast a shade. When we cast that shade, that is what is going to stop the sun from permeating through the leaf layer up top and drying out our water that we've captured. And, and in modern agriculture, um, I don't remember the specific number, so don't quote me on this, but it's over 90% of water sprayed on top of a monoculture field where bare soil exists is evaporated off. Through the capturing of shade, we have forests that develop diverse, massive ecosystems at multiple layers from the, the top canopies to the subsoils. And it's just a beautiful network of, of ecology. And we do that, be, and that's, in, that's enabled due to the shade content, or the, the shade produced by the canopies. So, so we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna plant right off the bat. Um, and what's even more fun about, about planting these trees is that you can actually tr produce these to be very specific trees. Like let's say we wanted this one to be a fruit tree here. Uh, and let's say that we liked this guy here. This is gonna be a, a, an apple tree or um, a nut tree. How about a almond? Or down here, we're gonna do the apple trees. You know, just whatever you feel, okay? So, so whatever your design incorporates, not whatever you feel, but whatever you see is the most reasonable vegetation species for your specific climate end zone. So now going forward, after we've we've cast our shade, we're retaining our water, we're stopping the, this uh, evaporation and precipitation of our water, we're allowing it to silk down into the root systems, really permeate through all of the subsurface, the na nature just continues to grow. And we just, oh man, it just it's gonna explode. You're gonna have so much more life and vitality along this edge of the mountainside or the hillside, this, this contour line, because you have these 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 indicators or or the or not indicators these um these requirements for life to begin to thrive and then we're going to continue our effort right and we're going to plant maybe maybe because there's a little bit of capillary action on top of this this swale we're actually going to utilize the space um up above that as well and we're going to plant whoops wrong one Bear with me here, new program, never used this before. Um, let's say we're gonna plant on top of the swale. Okay, so now so now we have, now we have not only our lower trees casting shade, but now we've actually got, let's say another fruit tree or another nut tree of some form is up here. And and now we have this, this extra set. So now our, our solar, penetration on, on either end of the spectrum here is coming way way down as far as so as far as soil contact goes because now we've got even more of a spread of canopy and this particular tree up here is really going to shade out our our uh, swell system here and really retain that water um, and it takes about a day to two days for uh, for this this capillary effect here and this pluming effect down below to really take effect. 
And so the more shade that we cast on this area, the stronger and more effectively this is going to happen. But over time, what's incredible and really one of nature's superpowers is as these trees grow and their root systems dive down deep into the subsoils where the really rich nutrients are, they actually have a really cool effect. They will actually begin to create channels where that water will start to permeate along their root systems, enabling that water to get now much, much deeper into the, sur the soil levels. So now this pluming effect has a much greater reach. Whoops. I'm on the wrong drawing type here. Much greater reach than, uh, than had it been originally just where it was, right? So now we've almost doubled or tripled this capillary action and this pluming action because the water has something to grab onto and to move it through those surfaces. And the microorganisms are all doing their work and scooping this up along the way. So this is the purpose of a swale. This is what a swale does. So if you have a slope on your property, this is really the ground zero most basic level of understanding of a swale. Um, and there's so much more that we can go into about what benefits there are over swale. And there's a lot that happens over time, um, several years, 100 years down the road. Eventually, this will actually just become a bump in the road, a bump in the hill. Um, but in the meantime, you're capturing this water and you're funneling it where it needs to be. So get with me when you have questions.